I'm good to go? All right. Good morning, everybody. We'll start our devotion in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You remember what we've been talking about a little bit in our devotions? Callista. Listening, and what do we use to listen with, Ranger? Our ears. God wanted us to listen so much that he gave us two ears. Could you imagine if you only had one ear? He gave us two so we could listen. But we also heard somebody else listens. Ooh. We listen. Sam. Who else listens? God. God. Right. Psalm 94, verse 9 says, He who planted the ear, so God who put the ears inside our head, that planted them in there, does he not hear? So we heard how God hears. And what does God usually listen to? Leah. Our prayers. Right. So we talked last time about what a prayer is. And we talked about prayers being like a heart-to-heart talk with God. Sometimes you might use words. Like we might, at the end, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together, and we'll say it out loud. We'll say it with our mouth. We'll pray to God out loud with using words. Other times, it's just your heart talking to God. You're laying in bed at night, and it's, Dear Jesus, I'm really worried about my memory work for tomorrow. I worked really hard on it, so please help me to say my memory work right. So you might not use words. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit more about prayer. Oh, man. I forgot to do something. I ha- I'm sorry. I have, I have a letter I forgot to mail. It's a really important letter I need to send to my brother in South Carolina. And it's so important, it says important. So I'm going to have to mail that right now. My really important letter I need to send to my brother in South Carolina. So thankfully I have my letter, I have my envelope, and I have, what are these? Stamps. Okay. So I'm going to mail my letter. I got my envelope. You guys ever mailed letters before? Okay, I got my envelope. I put my return address so they know where to send it if something goes wrong. Um, Is that all I need? No. No. Uh oh. What am I missing, Levi? Well, we have a mailbox right down there, so I'm going to just take it down there and put it in like this in a minute after I put my stamp on. Rosie? Well, my address is right here. So it'll come back. There! Oh! I forgot the address. What's going to happen to the letter? Remember, it's really important. What's going to happen to my really important letter, my brother, if I don't have his address on there? It won't get there because it doesn't know where to go. It just sits in the mailbox and the mailman goes, where is this supposed to go? So the address is really important. The address tells you who this really important letter that I need to get out, who that important letter is supposed to go to. So if you don't have an address... You don't know where this is supposed to go. The mailman doesn't know what to do with this. So if we think of prayer like that, the address is important too, right? Who are we praying to? Sam. God. All right. When Jesus' disciples saw how much Jesus prayed, his disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us, like John the Baptist taught his disciples how to pray. So we need to be taught how to pray. And when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, it started like this. Who can read that for me? Let's go, Isla. Do those words sound familiar to anybody? Raise your hand if you've heard those words before. Our Father who art in heaven. Yeah, that's a very familiar prayer. Marissa, isn't it? Do you know what, kind of, what we call that prayer? That it starts out with our Father who art in heaven. Do you know the name for that? No? Micah? 
the Lord's Prayer. And we call it the Lord's Prayer because the Lord Jesus gave us this prayer. So in the coming weeks, we're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. But first of all, we need to know the address, right? Who are we sending this prayer to? We're sending it to our Father and not your dads in your houses. We're sending it to our Father where? In heaven, our heavenly Father. So, the next question is, whose Father is God? Wait, that was really poor grammar. You know what I'm asking, though, Levi? Who's... Uh, He's Jesus' father. Yep, and we know when Jesus often talked about him, he said, my father, I thank you for this. My father, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. All right. Uh, Alexa. Our father. Take a look at this passage. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So how do we become sons of God? Through faith, through baptism. These are things where God brings us into his family and makes us his sons. And when he makes us believers, that means God is now our father. And our father who we can talk to, right? That we can address our important letters to. Not our letters, right? Our prayers. So you are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. By believing in his son, God makes you his own son. And because he's your father, you can call him our father. And Jesus tells us that when you pray to him, is God going to listen to his children when they pray to him? Yes. He gives us Almost a funny thing to think about. How many, well, I'll go back. How many of you had breakfast this morning? All right. What'd you have for breakfast, Teddy? A waffle. Mmm. Did you have syrup on it? Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, who haven't I called on today? Colin, all right, Nolan, I mean. What did you have for breakfast today? And bacon? Oh, you are the winner. Caden. Frosted flakes. Okay. Amber. Tricks. Okay. So we all had, most all of you had breakfast. I hope you all had breakfast. It gets you going for the day. Yes, Callista? Two pieces of toast. Did you have anything on the toast? So who, who got you your toast this morning? Mom, did you ask mom, or did mom say, what do you want for breakfast? And you said, just two pieces of toast. Is that what you did? Okay. So what if you asked mom for toast, and she gave you a rock to chew on? Would mom do that? No. Two of my girls wanted eggs for breakfast. Well, what if instead of an egg, I gave her them snakes to eat? Ew, that would be pretty horrible, wouldn't it? Are our parents perfect? No, they sin, just like we sin. And yet, when we ask them for bread for breakfast, they give us bread, don't they? Even though they're not perfect. Or when they ask for an egg for breakfast, um, we give them an egg for breakfast, or we tell them, you go make it yourself. That's actually what I did. But... We, don't, we, we care about our kids, and we want to give them the things they need each day, including food and the right kind of food. Jesus talks about that. He says, which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Which par- what kind of parent would do that? Look at this picture. This one even looks like a loaf of bread. Would your dads give that to you for breakfast in the morning if you asked for it? No. Because they love you, and they want to give you what you need. Or if he asks for a fish, oh, dad, can I have fish for supper? Most of us like fish. Some of us don't. 
If he asks for fish, we'll give him a serpent. Could you imagine dad bringing a live snake onto a plate for you to eat instead of fish for supper? No. So even though mom and dad are sinners, they still care about you and they know to do, give you what you need. So what about our father? Jesus says, if you then are evil, so if you're sinners, you don't do everything right all the time. If you are evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask? So that's what we trust when we pray, our Father who art in heaven. Our Father is going to give us the best. And he's already done that, hasn't he? What's the best thing God the Father has already given us? Amber. Yep, and how did he give it to us? Through his son, right? Through Jesus. He already gave us his very best, Jesus Christ, who he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. If Jesus, God loved, the Father loves you that much that he gives you Jesus, he's going to give you good things when you ask him. He's not going to give you a loaf of stone to eat or anything like that. He's going to give good things to those who ask him. So when we pray, and Jesus taught us to pray, it starts with the address. And the address to the Lord's Prayer, who are we addressing our prayer to? What would we write here? See if I can do it. Isla. There we go. Now it's ready to go. Now that important thing you have that you want to talk to God about, you say, our Father who art in heaven, here's my important thing. And what's the promise? The Father is going to listen, and he's going to give you good things to those who ask. So let's talk, say this together. This is the address in the Lord's Prayer. This is something we memorize. Uh, I don't know, Mrs. Ream doesn't usually do, do you do the Lord's Prayer? Okay, but when you get to Mr. Thurow's classroom and when you get to my classroom and catechism class, this is something we study. So when we're saying, our Father who art in heaven, what does that mean? Well, we're going to read that all together. You guys ready? Can you see that all okay? Read it if you can. Our Father who art in heaven, what does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children so that we may pray to him as boldly and confidently as dear children ask their dear father. All right. So we will go to our father now and we will pray to him for things. We will do it boldly and confidently knowing he hears us uh, we're going to pray for Anthony's family, because his grandpa died, right? So we'll pray that God our Father is with Anthony's family and comforts his family with his love. Okay, we'll pray. Your Father in heaven, we thank you that you hear our prayers, and you will give us the good things we need for each and every day. Thank you, first of all, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ that through him we have forgiveness and the promise of heaven. Thank you also for the promise to be with us and to give us the good things we need for each and every day. Thank you for watching over us last night and over this last week. We pray now that you would be with us in the coming day and this weekend that is before us. We ask also that you'd be with Anthony and his family. Comfort them with your love and surround them as they are sad about the death of Anthony's grandfather. Comfort them with your abiding love and give them your peace. And now, Lord, we join together to pray as your son Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. So our hymn is hymn 766. We'll sing two verses. Now this hymn, anybody want to guess what this hymn is about? <gasps> Leah? The Lord's Prayer. So if we're going to do devotions about the Lord's Prayer, we're going to be using this hymn uh, for the next seven, eight weeks. Okay? Uh, we'll use different verses, of course, but the melody will get very familiar to you. So we're going to sing verse 1, and then we'll sing verse 9. Uh, Mrs. Reem will share with you how the melody sounds, and then we'll join in singing. <laughs> 